I'd much rather you know win ugly than than lose pretty. I've never seen a pretty loss, so I'll, I'll take this one. I love being eight and one. Ouch. Coach Sark saying this win might have been ugly. I hear it had a great personality, though. <laughs> and so does this guy. He's Tyler Feldman. I'm Jeff Jones. And Tyler, we just saw a Longhorns three-point overtime win against a ranked Kansas State team that was tied for first place in the Big 12. This is a big win that we saw on Saturday. And to me, it looked like three different games all wrapped up into one. I saw a Longhorns dominant performance. I saw a Kansas State comeback. And then I saw one of the most dramatic finishes that I can remember inside of DKR Texas. Memorial Stadium. Jeff, you saw the game three different ways. Steve Sarkeesian used three different words post game to describe this win for his Longhorns. Versatility, resilience, and perseverance. Three words that he says championship teams employ when necessary in critical moments of the ball game. We saw that today, possibly a season saving victory in overtime for the Longhorns. So let's see how it all played out this afternoon at DKR Texas Memorial Stadium. The Wildcats coming to Austin, averaging 40 points their last three games, but the Texas defense sets the tone early. Baron Sorrell, Ethan Burke, each with first quarter sacks. Then we get our first look at episode two of the Malik Murphy show. And I got to say, it's looking pretty, 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 pretty good. Murphy, deep ball, caught at an eye. Mitchell, 37 yard touchdown. That's Murphy and Mitchell's third touchdown connection the last five quarters. It's seven nothing Texas. All right, early second quarter. Sark decides to go for it on fourth and short. Looks like a QB sneak, but Malik. Options for the pitch to CJ Baxter and look at all that real estate Baxter with more space than a living room without furniture 54 yard house call 17 nothing Longhorns Texas goes into halftime up 17 to 7 second half cats get the ball first but they quickly give it right back Michael Taft are you kidding me that's now three straight games with an interception for the Westlake native and former walk on. And let's just keep highlighting our local guys from Westlake. Ethan Burke back from injury, puts him to sleep. Jalen Ford recovers, and on the very next play, Heisman hopeful. Jonathan Brooks runs it in to give Texas a 24-7 lead. K-State proving this sign very wrong, though. Now 27-13 early fourth. Malik tosses his second interception of the game. That leads to another Wildcats touchdown, so all of a sudden, it's back to a one score game 27 21 Texas with 13 and a half minutes still to play ensuing Texas drive turnover monster strikes again Jonathan Brooks oh no coughs up the football K State recovers and on the cats very next play will Howard post route again wide open 26 yard touchdown and Hey, just like that, this game's tied at 27. Longhorns typically dominant in the fourth, but it's K-State who outscores Texas 23-3 in the final quarter to force overtime. In OT, Burt Auburn connects on his fourth field goal of the game to give UT the lead. K-State's turn, that Texas D steps up big time. Stuff on fourth down. Longhorn Nation, inhale, exhale. Longhorns survive 33 to 30. As we welcome back my good friend, sports director Jeff Jones. So Jeff, that game had a lot of elements, but you <laughs> saw something post game that also added an extra element. Yeah, that game had a little bit of everything. And so we're sitting in the post game interview room waiting for Coach Sark to come and tell us what he saw in the game. And I hear somebody <laughs> behind me, a, a vaguely familiar voice, take this deep breath and go, oh boy, <laughs> that was something. And I'm thinking to myself, like, well, we're in a media room. Let's be professional. Who is this? And so I look around, and it's athletics director Chris Del Conte. Of he, he can say what he wants uh -huh. to in that room. So I said, Chris, did your heart get beaten a little bit there? He said, it sure did. And it probably wasn't beating any faster than on fourth and four at the end of overtime in the play that won the game for Texas. You're looking at it right now. An outstanding effort, especially from the Texas defensive lineman, getting that penetration in the K-State backfield and sealing the game for the Longhorns. So after the game, I asked the Longhorns, what was going through your mind just before and during this potentially season-saving play? 
in my mind, it was big time players show up in big time games, and that's kind of one. That was the moment that I wanted to show up in. I'm like, these are the moments you live for. Um, I mean, obviously, everybody's like, oh, they want to be that person to make the play. Uh, but but when the clock stopped and, and we stopped them, it was it was just excitement and joy. So I looked at Sweet. I was like, Sweet, come on, give me everything you got. And yeah, that's what it was. When they went decided to go for it. You know, the, the couple things that go through my mind are one, them spreading us out, and my, my concern was the quarterback run. That's just everybody's doing their job, everybody's executing, and then, you know, uh, backs against the wall, we show up. So the defense made that final game winning play, but the offense helped put him in position, and it was an offense led by Malik Murphy, who had an up and down day. Episode two of the Malik Murphy show started out really, really good, really entertaining. He finishes the day completing 51% of his passes for 248 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. He did have to bounce back, though, on a number of occasions after those two turnovers. It wasn't perfect. Steve Sarkeesian saying post game, he doesn't have to make every play. He's already proven that he's capable of being the starting quarterback for the Longhorns. But now it's time for Malik to learn from his mistakes and move forward. I think one thing for Malik, and, and I'm, I'm going to have this discussion with him, and that not every play is going to be the play. Yeah, like that, that, it's not always that play that where you make that throw. This is not, uh, you know, a one man's game. You know, it's a team team thing. I don't have to try to be bigger than what I am. What he hopefully can understand is we're going to be an aggressive play calling team and he's going to have plenty of opportunities to make throws and to do those things. Um, and sometimes, you know, similar to last week, sometimes your best play is throwing it away. You know, play the game, play it as it is, uh, believe in the coaches, believe in the players around me, not try to do too much, just play the game. We haven't got to that point yet uh, with him uh, because it's not about talent. It's not about understanding of the scheme. It's he doesn't have to prove anymore that he has to make a play. He should feel like he, we have the utmost faith in him because because we do. So the Longhorns escape K-State 33 to 30 in overtime. They're now 8-1 overall, 5-1 in the Big 12. They're on the road the next two weeks, starting next Saturday at TCU.